I now reside in Santa's Grotto. Denise's house is decorated fabulously with no fewer than two trees. Colleen rocked up on Saturday night for family Christmas karaoke with sackloads of presents, and, er, unfortunately left with none, sorry, call, three-day rapathon starts today. And after my positive scan results, and the sheer fact I am here for Christmas, I am so completely in the mood. So you're going to think this column is shockingly gloomy, but Christmas is a time for reflection, too. At the weekend, Diana Riggs' daughter Rachel revealed her mum's views on legalizing assisted dying and her pleas to end her life as she entered the final, painful, weeks of her cancer in 2020. It is an excruciating read. Dame Diana did not have the final control she wanted over her own life or dignity. She'd explored traveling to Dignitas, but the hurdles involved made it an impossible option. In her own words, recorded, she makes her views clear. I can't say I'd opt to end my life. It terrifies me, going a second too soon. But would it reassure me to know I had the option? I think so. It's the loss of control over what's coming that scares me. It's something I speak to my counselor about. And I don't want my family to care for me at the end. I don't want them to see me suffer, I must have dignity at all costs. I picture myself in a hospice and my sisters arriving to administer pink gin. But what if there's agony, what if it's worse? With the necessary checks and balances, I'm with Diana. I looked around at the family on Saturday night, singing Buble and Sinatra, me sounding like a frog, I've got a cold, Denise cooking up a stew like mum used to, and I want to stay with them forever. But knowing I had a legal choice over the end of my life would be a comforting hand in the dark I could choose whether to reach for, to hold, or not.